Hi everyone, my name is Alexis Roberson. I work as a developer advocate here at Elastic, and today we'll be covering the match phrase prefix query. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so here we are, we are in our Elastic Cloud, and we are going to run a few examples before we go to our whiteboard, and then from the whiteboard, we're going to run those examples here in our Elastic Cloud, okay? So for match phrase prefix query, a question that we could ask is, how can I find matches with the terms in the exact order while allowing the last term to be a prefix? Okay, so it's gonna preserve that order and proximity and then allow for that last term to be a prefix. Now, if you weren't able to check out the last video, we covered the match boolean prefix query or match bool prefix, okay? And we had the example where we were looking within the description field and we're searching for fresh and then the prefix AP. Now, I would recommend that you check out that video if you really wanna know and understand the distinction between the two and see the differences and the type of results that we get back. Now, let's run this query. Okay, and so we get back 462 results. So now, let's take a look. So in the description field, we get back fresh apricot. We get back fresh apple, cool. We get back fresh apples. Okay, so it's still following the fresh AP prefix. And now in our fourth result, we get back fresh figs. And so if you can remember, the match bull prefix query is turned into a Boolean query. And so each of these terms or this term and this prefix are treated as independent searches. And so it's going to give back either or, or both. Or if it gives back both, they may not be in the same order. And so understanding that order and proximity are not guaranteed. But if we were to use match phrase prefix query, how would that change it? Or how would that change our outcome? All right, so we run our query searching for fresh AP. And so if you remember, we got back 462 results, but now we're only getting back three, okay? And so we get back fresh apricot, we get back fresh apple, cool, and then we get back fresh apples. So now that we've run these examples, let's go over to our whiteboard, dive deeper into the definition for match phrase prefix, a few examples, and then we'll end the video back in the Elastic Cloud. All right, so we're here in our whiteboard. So what is the match phrase prefix query? So this query returns documents with the words of provided text in the same order as provided with the last term being a prefix, okay? So this last term is a prefix. And so we wanna think about it. For the match bool prefix query, there were underlying queries that were used in order to sort of get that functionality. And the same sort of goes here for match phrase prefix, okay? So it's kind of the combination of two queries. So we have the phrase query or the match phrase query and then we also have the prefix query, okay? And so what the phrase query does is that it takes in a phrase and then it finds that phrase, that exact phrase within whatever field you're searching on, okay? And for prefix, obviously, it allows you to input characters and then it searches for those characters or words that begin with those, with those characters, okay? And so if we had, for example, Mary had a little lamb, Okay, but instead of the entire word, we just had a prefix, okay? And so all of these terms will be treated as one phrase, okay? So the order and proximity will be preserved for all of them. And then this will be treated as a prefix, okay? Pretty straightforward. With the parameters that we have for this query, we can use analyzer, zero terms query parameter, max expansions, and slop. And so for analyzing zero terms query, in previous videos, I do cover examples, just going over those individually. So I'm not gonna do examples for those. I am going to talk about the differences between the two. And then we'll go over examples for using max expansions as well as slop. And then we'll run those examples within our Elastic Cloud. All right, so what is the difference between the analyzer parameter and the zero terms query parameter? Now, I'm not gonna go into full detail. There is a beginner's crash course to Elastic that I highly recommend checking out. That goes into full details about the basic architecture and really getting started with more advanced queries. And so when we think about the relationship between the analyzer parameter and the zero terms query parameter, it starts with the standard analyzer. Okay, and so what the standard analyzer does is it processes the text. So the provided text that's in your query, it analyzes that so that it's easier to search for. And so we can think about this in a couple steps. The first step being to lowercase all of your words or all of your terms in your search query or in your query string. Then the next step is to remove all of the stop words, okay? And stop words being those type of common words that wouldn't add much value to the search. And so lastly, the analyzer separates each of those terms into their own tokens. 
Okay, so that's the process. Now this seems pretty harmless, right? But let's say we're looking for a common or popular phrase, to be or not to be. So for to be or not to be, right? And so if it's like lowercase is all your all of the words, like that's fine. But then now let's say it removes stop words where obviously it's going to get rid of all of these words. And so what's the solution to this? How can we how can we keep this from happening? All right, so with dealing with processing text, how can we fix this issue, right? So if we have this popular phrase, how do we ensure that the analyzer doesn't get rid of these words and we're still able to get back results? So one way we could solve this is we could use a custom analyzer, okay? So we'll define our own analyzer instead of the standard one. And then what we could do is we could disable the lower casing of the words. And this works because within your search query, the text that you provide will be case sensitive, okay? And so to be or not to be, those stop words, if they're not lowercase, Case, then that means that they won't be considered as stop words, all right? And then now you're able to get back results. All right, so that's one solution. Now the thing about this solution is, yes, you, you're able to get back the exact results that you were looking for, given that you do have a phrase that matches the search query. The thing about it is you'll have to define your own or you'll have to redefine the mapping or define your own custom analyzer within the mapping, right? And you can do that, but let's say you just wanted results back. You didn't have to get the exact re results back, but you just wanted results back. Well, that's where you have the zero terms query parameter. And it has two different values that it can be set to. It can be set to none or it can be set to all. And for none, obviously it's saying that if it is the case that the analyzer gets rid of all of our words within our search query, just return nothing, just do nothing. But if we return all, or if we set the parameter to all, then it's saying, hey, give us back everything. Okay, so give us back everything that we have, all of the documents that we have within our index. And this is closely related to the match all query. All right, so that's the difference. So you can use either one of these solutions, but this is the relationship between the analyzer parameter and the zero terms query parameter. All right, so now we're at max expansions and max expansions is the maximum number of terms to which the last provided term of the query will expand to. Okay, so what does this mean, right? And so with the last term, we know that it's a prefix. So let's say we have the search terms balsamic, and then the prefix VIN, which can be anything. It can be vinaigrette. And then it can also be, let's say, vindaloo. I know that word because I looked it up. <laughs> there you go. All right, so it's the same prefix, but it has different possible suffixes. These suffixes are known as like the expansion. And so the default value for max expansion parameter is 50. And what this says, it's saying all the possible words that this prefix can expand to has to be no more than 50. Now, if you think about it, in a previous video, we talked about fuzziness, right? And we talked about the max expansions parameter that's associated or that is a supporting parameter for fuzziness. And so for fuzziness, max expansions is about misspell word, okay? Okay, so it's about, hey, what are all the possible words that this misspelled word can be, okay? And then obviously for the match phrase prefix query, it's talking about prefixes. You can also lower this number, right? So you can set the max expansion to three. And by making this a smaller number, you can improve performance. And so that's the only thing that I'll add there. Now let's take a look at an example. All right, so let's say we were looking for white wine and then VIN within the ingredients field, and we wanted to set max expansions to three. How would we write this query? All right, so you can pause this video and write out the query on your own, and then we'll come back and write it out together. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to pause the video and write out this query. Now let's write it out together. We're searching within the ingredients field. We're looking for white wine VIN, and we've set our max expansions to three, okay? So it can only expand to, at the most, three different possible terms within our search. And so now let's move on to our last parameter in that slot before running these examples within our Elastic Cloud. All right, so now we're at our last parameter. We're gonna talk about slop. Now, what exactly is slop? Slop is the maximum number of positions allowed between matching tokens, okay? So it's the maximum number of positions. 
Now, keep in mind, I said maximum number of positions, not maximum number of terms, okay? And so I'm gonna highlight this in an example for us to really see exactly what this means or what this looks like. And then I'll also point out that this parameter in particular defaults to the value of zero and then transpose terms have a slop of two. Okay, so let's say we had two search terms and we were looking for quick fox. All right, so quick fox. Now you can think of slop as allowing the misordering of terms while still allowing for results to be returned back. So if we're looking for the terms quick fox and slop is set to zero, that means that the documents that are returned back should only contain quick fox in that order, nothing changed, nothing rearranged, it's in that exact order. So then why is it that transpose terms have a slop of two? Well, let's take a look at this. So let's say quick is at position zero and fox is at position one and then the transpose position of these terms would be fox quick, okay? So in order to change fox quick back to quick fox, let's see how many positions we would have to move in order to get back to that. So we would move it one position and then two positions. And so that means that we moved two positions. Or we can move quick and we can say minus one, minus one positions, so that now quick is in front of fox. And so it makes sense as to why the transposition of the terms has a slop of two. Well, let's take a look at another example. So let's say we're still looking for a quick fox, but we had the search terms, the fox is quick, okay? What would be the slop of these terms? And we wanna make it to where it reads as quick fox. So we could move fox over or we can move quick over. So let's start by moving fox over. So we'll move it one position, two positions, three positions in order to move it back to quick fox. And let me just put these numbers up here to say plus one, plus one. Or let's say we wanted to move quick in order to put it in front of fox. We can move quick over one position, two position, and then three positions. And so now, instead of having the, we would have, we would have quick right there, okay? So if you haven't picked up on it already, the slot of this example would be three. So what this means is that if we wanted to get documents that contain quick fox, and we also wanted to get documents that contain the foxes quick, we would have to set the slot to three in order to get that back. And we can continue to increase the value of slot, right? And what this does is it allows for the misordering of the terms or the terms to not have to be in the exact order given in, this, in the search query for that document to be considered a match. So we can continue to increase slot, you know, we could set to you know 20 30 40 50 whatever the case may be so that we can make sure that that document even though the search terms are completely out of order and aren't next to each other will still be considered a match and i'll actually go over an example within elastic cloud before we do that let's go over an example using the slot parameter using what we know about the slot parameter so to go back to the context of the index we've been using that's the recipes index let's say we were looking for the word fresh and then the prefix ap in the description field and we gave it a slop of two. How would you write this example? So take a few minutes, write out what you have, and then we'll come back and write it out together. All right, perfect. So hopefully you were able to write this out. Now let's write it out together. All right, so here we have it. We are searching within the description field, looking for a fresh AP, and we've given it a slop of two. And what this means is that the positions of the tokens can be at the most two positions away from each other. And so this would allow for us to have sort of transposed or misordered terms or swapped terms uh, within documents, and those documents will still be considered a match. All right, so now that we've covered slop, we've covered max expansions, we've looked at what exactly is the match phrase prefix query. Now let's run these examples examples within Elastic Cloud to ensure we get the intended results. All right, so we are here back in our Elastic Cloud and we're gonna run our two examples from our whiteboard. So the first example, we were using max expansions parameter. We set it to 10 uh, and we were running this on the ingredients field looking for white wine VIN. And so this is just going to be exactly sort of what we expected. Let's look on here. So ingredients field and then we get white wine uh, vinegar. So in this particular field, it's a limited amount of sort of combinations of white wine VIN. Most of these are going to be like white wine uh, vinegar. So if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we should see again white wine vinegar. But if we had, let's say, vindaloo or vinaigrette, uh, we would also 
also see those results as well. So max expansions, again, it's helpful for limiting or putting a cap on the amount of expansions that could, or the amount of suggestions that could come back as, as words to fit this prefix. And so now our next example, we were using the slot parameter. And so we're looking on the, on the description field for fresh AP. And so let's run this to see. So we get back through results, pretty similar to what we had before. We did not use the slot parameter. And this is the case because we set slot to zero. And this means that, hey, in the exact order that you see them in, these are the terms or these are the documents that we want to be returned back. And so when we look at the description field, we're going to get the fresh apricot. We're going to get, you know, fresh apple, right? All the way down to the bottom, the same thing. Now, if we change this to one, Let's see if that changes our results. And it does, right? So we get back four results. But now we're getting back fresh Mexican appetizer. And why is this the case? Okay, so this is the case because, again, if we wanted to change it back to fresh AP, where it's next to each other, we would have to move either fresh or we would have to move the word appetizer and it would move over by one position. So it's one position off from the original. And, you know, one thing I'll highlight here, because this confused me a little bit when I was when I was planning for this, but I also set this to two. And I got back the same results. And so I was trying to figure out, okay, it has to be exactly two positions away for it to be considered a match or for it to be sort of matching this slot parameter. And what I realized is that, so if I set it to two, uh, it's also going to include one position away. If I set it to three, it's going to give me back results that are three positions away, two positions away, and one position away. So whenever you put a specific number, like let's say 50, it's going to include 50 all the way down to positions minus one, right? Just adding that in there and just running this real quick and again we get the same four results so I also wanted to highlight the example that we went over on the whiteboard just to kind of bring it home and understand exactly what slop does and so I did create this new index called movie titles and so I'm just gonna run this so we can see what's in the what's in the index well so we have quick Fox movie we have the name of the movie or we have the movie field and then the name of the movie quick Fox we have Fox quick that's the transposition of that the Fox is quick and then we have this long sentence that includes our should include uh, some or all of the terms that are in the original search terms, okay? So now let's run this here. So right now, slop is set to zero. Let's run it. All right, so we get back quick fox. So that's to be expected. If I were to set this to two, and so now we're getting the transposition of the terms, Fox Quick. If I set it to three, we went over that example. Again, we're expecting to get back the Fox is Quick. And keep in mind again that it's including the Fox is Quick, uh, Fox Quick as well as Quick Fox. So it's that three to one, it's that position minus one is going to include that as well. So let me run this. And so lastly, let me run this again. So you're seeing that we're getting these, the first three examples, but we're still not getting this example. So let's say we wanted to get this. We know that it's completely out of order, completely out of whack, but we still want to be able to include that within our results. How can we, or what number could we set slop to for that to take place, right? And so if I set this to four, okay, let's see what happens. So we're still getting back the same three results. So it seems like, okay, maybe our number isn't big enough. Okay, so maybe our scope isn't, isn't big enough. Let's try seven, okay? All right, tried seven and again. So it seems like it's it's more than it's more than seven positions away. So because I've tried this out before now, I'm going to set it to 10 and see if we can also get the inclusion of that fourth result. And so now we're getting four results back. It's including this document that is completely out of order, but still contains Quick and Fox within the results. So hopefully this video was helpful. This was match phrase prefix query, and then we'll be covering the next video after this. All right, have a good day.